He's taping an album this year. Let's hear it for Glenn Tickle, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn Tickle, that's just my name, guys. That's my name. That's my real given name that I have to use in my life when I meet other adults. And that's been hard. That's been a bit of a challenge. I used to be a substitute teacher. Yeah. Some of you are putting that together. That's a terrible job, even if your name's not stupid. And I had to get up every morning, stand in front of a different group of strange children, and write Mr. Tickle on the board. <laughs> It's the hardest part of that job. Weirdest thing about being a sub uh, is I know all the kids in my town, but I don't know their parents. So that means I can be like walking around and I get recognized by a very excited little person. And no parent wants their seven-year-old running up to a bearded man in a Walmart shouting, Mr. Tickle, Mr. Tickle, I missed you so much, give me a hug! That's the story of how I got kicked out of a Walmart. It's fine, the charges have been dropped. Uh, the worst part is when I find out that other people don't think something I think is funny is funny. Uh, there's a joke I've been trying. It was, it's in the first notebook uh, that I got when I started doing comedy. As like one, It's one of the first jokes I wrote, and I still try to work it into sets because I think it's funny. And it's been universally hated by audiences for all seven years that I've been doing comedy. Um, the joke is, I had a dream last night I was getting attacked by a bear. Don't worry, I'm fine. And that's <laughs> the idea that anyone would be concerned after the first half of that joke is what's funny to me, but I don't know. I'm the only one. I've done the numbers. I've performed that for probably literally thousands of people and maybe five of them have laughed. It barely counts as comedy, but it's sort of entertainment. I bow tie raced Bill Nye the Science Guy. Uh, I, was, I was hosting some stuff for a website uh, that we were shooting at South by Southwest. We were co-producing an event with Star Talk, uh, and they wanted me to come up with a, like a thing that I could do with Bill Nye, uh, and that was my pitch. I don't have one on now, but like, I wear bow ties pretty regularly, and I'm like, not that I think I can do it better than him, but he didn't know about it, and I had like I was practicing, and it's not usually something you try to do quickly. So I was practicing to try to do it very quick, and then like sprung it on him at the last minute, and he's like, "Yeah, all right, let's go," and he just he destroyed. Me. I cracked under the pressure. The video's online; you can find it. It's embarrassing for me. Uh, I go in with some hubris and just embarrass myself in front of one of my heroes. It was a high and low point, all at the same time. Uh, I, have a, I have a baby girl, you guys. A little daughter. Yeah. 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 Sometimes people don't clap at that. They don't care that I've tried. <laughs> Those people aren't as nice as you guys. I like you guys better. Um, but when my wife was pregnant, we were debating what we were going to name the child. And my suggestion was Circus Trapeze Tickle. Because I think if you have a stupid last name, lean into it, have some fun. Right? She's like, I'm not it's naming my daughter Circus. That's stupid. You're stupid. We're not naming you. All right, fine. Then you come up with a name that doesn't sound stupid when you put Tickle at the end of it. So we compromised and we named our daughter Tess. There it is. Nice. Slow burn on that joke, you guys. 100% uh, worth it. Because I'm not, a, I'm not a dirty comedian, and that's the thinnest joke I can tell where testicles the punchline. Um, I do a bit about it. So I, don't, I got, I did get heckled once, and it stuck with me because the guy found me on Facebook after to keep heckling me. Uh, so now I make audiences, I shoot audiences yelling at him, and I, I originally sent them to him on Facebook, but he like blocked me after the first like two or three times I did it, because of course he did, but I still, uh, I still shoot audiences yelling at this guy, and some of my comedian friends are like, yeah, just stop, stop doing that joke, and I'm like, why? And I'm like, because it happened five years ago, grow up, I'm like, never. Um, but it, it bugged me, because like it, it sucks to get heckled, but he was right, like I was not having a good show. But I couldn't admit it, so instead I just really dug my heels in and have spent five years trying to get back at this guy. Uh, so that didn't feel great. And it feels good now because I get people like to yell how much they love me and hate him, which is 
a fun thing to do if you ever get the chance to get a room full of people to scream that they love you. Definitely do it. It feels wonderful. Uh, family, it's hard only because, uh, like, it's tough to go do a week of shows somewhere when I have a wife and daughter who aren't coming with me. Um, I started taking my daughter's toy robot on the road with me as, like, uh, just a security blanket thing. So I'm like, oh, I miss my kid. I can't bring her. I'll steal this toy. And, like, now he's part of my act, usually. Um, I put a little computer in him so he can tell jokes because that's what my daughter thinks when I'm like, oh, I have to bring Mr. Toy Bato to go do comedy. She thinks I'm bringing the robot so he can tell jokes. So I'm like, that's adorable. I'm not going to break her little heart and tell her that's not how it works. Um, so yeah, like missing them. If I'm uh, in the fall, like I'm going on, on tour for a couple weeks, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to see that. That's probably, that will be the longest I will have not seen my kid since she was born. Um, I think I've not seen my wife longer than that, but I've known her since seventh grade, so. Like, I, she knows I'm coming back, probably. Like, it's easier to explain to an adult woman than a three-year-old. Like, yeah, Daddy will be back, but, like, in uh, two weeks. Which is, I don't know, it makes me sad thinking about it. But speaking of my daughter, everybody, this is, uh, this is Mr. Toy Bato. Aww. This is my daughter's toy robot, and I know you guys are so pumped that this just turned into a weird puppet show. <laughs> uh, but this is my daughter's toy robot, and I steal her from him when I have to travel to do comedy because I can't bring a baby everywhere I go. So sometimes I bring Mr. Toy Bato as my little road buddy. And I always ask, like now that she's, she's three now, so she's a little older, I ask if I can bring Mr. Toy Bato. Like, Daddy uh, has to bring Mr. Toy Bato so he can go tell jokes. And she misunderstood. She now thinks her toy robot is a comedian. And I'm like, her manager? I don't know exactly what she thinks this relationship is. Uh, oh, here's the thing. Uh, you guys are going to laugh at these jokes. They're robot jokes. They're written by a robot for other robots. But you're going to laugh at them like they're the funniest things you ever heard. Uh, because I'm recording this. The video camera in the back, I'm going to show it to my daughter later so that she can see her toy robot crushing in comedy and think the world is a magical place. Uh, so you're going to laugh at these. You're not doing this for me. You're not doing it for Mr. Toy Bottom. You're doing it for testicle, everybody. Do it for testicle. Hello, my name is Mr. Toy Bottom. Please welcome Mr. Toy why did the robot cross the road? Why? To destroy all humans. <laughs> You've been a great audience.